and you better have my money. <laughs> You of blood tax, European though, hell's toxic, fruit's toxic. It's about the energy as well. Right, and that's why you were acting like that, because you were acting like an animal. <laughs> Hands don't want to be eaten, to make you sick. Man, doctors don't even know anything about nutrition. The license to push drugs, the street peddler hasn't. What are you going to eat a focus for? Of course you are you saying a lot of vegans are saying you? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 You weren't called no religion then, it was a way of life. That yeah, children that went to school and they were Rastafarians. And you were employed by the Rockefeller Foundation. No, we went to school. I didn't hear that. Why did you say that? No. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? Isn't it great? Napoleon's army, when Napoleon was coming to conquer the world, we stopped in Egypt, we were starting with Egypt to conquer the world. So we stopped and his soldiers, one of his generals, found this in a place called Rosetta. So that's why it's called the Rosetta Stone. The stone has nothing to do with Rosetta, okay? What was important about this stone, it was a key to help cracking the alphabet, and the language of the Madhu Netcher, which Europeans call hieroglyphics, but it's called Madhu Netcher. At the top is the Madhu Netcher. In the middle is Demotic, which is a cursor form. And down below is Old Greek. So they knew how to speak or read the Old Greek. And their key was, you'll see these little circles like that. See the little elliptical orbits? It's called a shin, not a cartouche. So if you go there and they tell you a cartridge, that's French for a bullet, a cartridge bullet. Has, and Egyptologists still talk about this nonsense today. And you go to Egypt talking about, I want a cartridge. No, you want a shin. More than one shin becomes a shin we. That's two shins. And then a shinu is many shins. You add you at the end of a word when you're speaking with Dunetra. So they knew that the ruler's name, the king or the queen, the ruler's name is inside of that shin. Only the ruler, even if you're the prince, you can't have your name in there. Your name only goes in the shin when you are the monarch, you are the ruler, the king or the queen. And you always read towards the knot. It's an elliptical orbit. And the ruler said, I rule every place the sun rises and sets. So it has a spiritual connotation to it, okay? And you always read towards the night. So that says, Ptolemy. So they knew that they can, since they knew the old Greek, they knew that certain symbols must mean certain letters because they knew what the word meant. What happens is that they thought the Madunetra was like other languages where it's only an alphabet. In the lecture, if you know the alphabet, you still almost can't read anything. There's something called biliterals and triliterals. But other than that, this is not that important. This is just a decree. When I translated it, the Ptolemy, who was the Greek ruler of Kemet during the time, was raising taxes. And he wanted everybody to make sure that the taxes was raised so he can get paid. 
So that's all this really says is that I'm raising the taxes and you better have my money. <laughs> quartz crystal inside. So that means even the stone is energized by the sun and holds that energy and holding information. So the material is just as important. Like you see behind there, you notice that his face is totally mutilated because he looks like most people in this group. It's a time capsule. I know you've never read that before. It's a time capsule to preserve knowledge, wisdom, and the spirit of this particular person. You see, you see the wings of Ma'at going across, and these writings here is a late period. So this is probably the Pert Im Haru. It's a saying from the Pert Im Haru. That's what they call the Book of the Dead. But it's not a Book of the Dead. It's a Book of Everlasting Life. So these are sayings. These are like um, well, here it says words spoken, words, words spoken by Haru, who was master of the land, who is beloved, who was born beloved, who speaks only my eye. So this time capsule is preserving it. Some of the mummies, if air never got in here, once they uh, prepare, oh, first of all, there's no such word as mummy. It's the sahu. sahu. So I'm gonna change your whole vocabulary. It's the sahu. And the sahu is the protected of the physical body. Once the physical body is preserved, all the organs are taken out, even the brain. Everything is taken out. The place said sometimes they left the heart, or next to the heart they would put a scarab, meaning to be to come forth forever. It took 70 days to prepare the body. So the day he's coordinated, he'll say, okay, you are the high priest, you're, you're responsible for getting his karas ready. You're responsible for writing, you know, finding the per in Peru. So if the person like Chet Amin, who lived for a short period of time, it might have taken 10 years to dig that tunnel down in the ground. So if he died in a short time period, uh, they might have to hijack somebody else's tomb, one of the priests or somebody else. Um, and they might take somebody else's karas that wasn't finished to put his name, because they only got 70 days to finish this up. Okay. The likeness, this is a prototype. The face here doesn't mean that that person looked exactly like this. They had like an African prototype that they would use, male and female. And usually when you see the hair like that, that's not straight. Those are locks or braids. Most of the time you'll see locks coming down. To show that he was wise is uh, connect Hatshepsut Amman. Listen to what I say. Connect Hatshepsut Amman. Everybody just says Hatshepsut. You got to read the glyphs. It says connect Hatshepsut Amman. She is a uh, she is a ruler for women for Amman. She represents the great woman adornment. So an uh, altar. This is an altar. We know this is a scribe. This is the scribe position. There's going to be three scribe positions I'll show you. So whenever you see the knees up like that, you know that this person is a scribe. He's a wisdom teacher. If you can look here, you can see he has locks on the knee side here. Okay. So his nose is cut off, but we already know who he is. The second golden age is called the classical age, where everybody learned to read and write. During the first golden age, only the priest and the royal family learned Madunetra. And only the king could go to heaven. And a few of the high priests stuck in. Okay? But after the second golden age, anybody who did ma'at, heaven was your reward. If you, your reward for doing ma'at was to receive ma'at. So during the second golden age, uh, Minchu Hotep 
open up the schools for everybody. In fact, he sent free skin to the village, so that the farmers' children could learn. Everybody learned literacy. So that was the most illiterate, and you're gonna see some of the greatest writing during the second golden age. And he took all the writings from the first golden age and redid them so their children would know their ancestors. Okay, so today we're trying to imitate what Minshu Hotep set up in the second golden age. A scribe, you need a scribe for everything. You need a scribe for the army so he can keep records, so he know how much food to make. You need a scribe for the farmers. You need a scribe for the bookkeepers. You need a scribe for the, as an accountant. You need scribes in the home. So scribe was the center position. From a scribe, you can grow to be the king. Dog was not our best friend. <laughs> okay, uh, so I just want to put that out there real quick. So they want to keep you there. They don't want to keep you in spirituality because. You don't need a hotline to the Creator. You got the same access to the Creator that the Pope does. You got the same access to the Creator that the High Priest does. Even the person in the gutter, it's just they just chose the wrong choice. Everything is about choice. Casket. That's this. The casket is a limitation. And the people who are responsible for for overseeing this is called the Enfu Priest. So a, a, a modern day mortician is a poor imitation of an Hindu priest. So the mortician just makes you look good for the funeral, so the, the family don't freak out. The Hindu priest is preparing you for eternity. Now, some people think that the ancient Egyptians were possessed with death. I want to ask you a question. If you're only going to be here for about a hundred years or less, your physical body, but your soul is going to be here for millions of years. Which one is more important? The soul, for me. in fact, this physical body is only to prepare you for the millions of years. So that's why it wasn't that they was actually obsessed with life. Not obsessed with death, they were obsessed with life because life is eternal. Death and birth are the opposite of each other and they're cycles of life. There is no opposite. That's why when you hold the ankh up, there is no opposite of life. Open your chest up, brother. When you look at that, look, look at that ankh here. He got the jet column. He got the wings of Peru. He got sky. He got Ra. He got my ankh all in there in that ankh. <laughs> <laughs> That's his son. He's a t-shirt. It's a collective move of freaks. He got penises all over the place. They didn't understand. Yeah, this is Amin Bata. Uh, Amin. 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 And that phallic symbol is coming out of his navel. It's not coming out of his reproductive area. Showing that he is fertile and he is connected to the biblical part of life. So it has nothing to do that he's a freak. The king, and we can see this was the king, is touching him because he wants that. His right hand would be up in the air. Now, they have a little story going around talking about him. There was a war going on. So all the men had to go to war. And they left men behind with all the women. The duty had to do. And when they came back, all the women were pregnant. <laughs> the duty had to so, do. <laughs> so men became a symbol of Amen. fertility. Okay, so that's, that's, that's it. So the king wants his kids. So he's touching on Romeo. If you look down, you can see both of them had a pedicure. No, I'm serious. If you look at, if you look at the fingernails, you see they had a manicure, pedicure. That's all ancient Kemet. Her hair is braided, and he has locks. What braid? No, he has just locks. He twists on the top. And again, we know what time period. Somebody tell me what time period this is. Third golden age. You can tell by the pleats. They didn't wear anything like this in the first and second golden age. Dynasty. Oh, this is General Haram Hob. It's actually, all right, they got Haram Hawk. It's Haru M. Heaven. 
See, that's why when you don't know the Madhu Natcha, you're just saying some strange stuff. It means Haru of the Great Festival. Haru of the Festival. Haru Imhet is the last ruler of the so-called 18th Dynasty before Ursa Ma'at and Seti came in. He's one of the few rulers that's not connected to the royal family. He was the general of the army under Tuck Ankh Amun. Then he was the general under I, who was the king after Tuck Ankh Amun. And he might have done an assassination plot because I's son was supposed to be the next ruler and he never became the ruler. We never heard no more about him. And the general of the army became the new king. So mm -hmm. y'all do some Sherlock Holmes and put that together. And as the general of the army, he got a whole bunch of statues like he was a scribe. But he was never a scribe. But he had to show the people, I'm a scribe. But he was really famous for making Amun powerful again. Because remember, you went to the area where Tep, I mean, uh, um, Akhenaten changed it to the Aten. And there was kind of competition. And so when uh, Akhenaten died, Tet Ankh Amen changed his name from Tet Ankh Aten to Tet Ankh Amen. And then I, the high priest, took over. And then he, the high priest was already like 70 something years old, so he only ruled for about three years before he croaked. And then he took over. And he's the last ruler, but he's not part of the royal family. And so Seti came and said, okay, all right, enough of this. And Seti, and then his son is the guy you see standing up there. That's Seti's son. She is the daughter of Ba. She is the maid of Ptah. And her child is Zephyr Atu, which means the perfect one. Okay, the beautiful perfect one. Zephyr Atu. So if y'all want to name a daughter, you know, you got okay, you got a two. She's carrying a lotus flower. She has the ankh in her left hand. The reason why the ankh is in the left hand, that's the side of the heart, that's the side of receiving from the community. The right side is given. The left is received. That's why you put your money in your left pocket. Say that again? That's why you're supposed to put your money in your left pocket. Put your money in your left pocket, and crystal. Your journey starts with the left leg. The military, left, 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 right. Nobody goes right, right. It's your left is your right foot. Some of y'all will get that in the morning. This is Ra. She is the daughter of Ra. With the cobra to protect. And Sekhmet, there's a little quick story on Sekhmet. Sekhmet at one time was disgusted with the people because they was disrespecting her father, Ra. So she turned to a fierce lioness and started destroying everybody who was dead, everybody who was doing the wrong thing. But some of everybody's doing the wrong thing. So Sekhmet was killing everybody in sight. So the other Netsuru got together and said, listen, Sekhmet, you got... But she didn't listen to him. She started devouring some of the Netsuru. So they ran back to Ron and said, you got to do something about your daughter. She's killing everybody. Ain't going to be nobody on earth. Ron said, look, you handle it. Go get Jehuti. So they, all the next room came to Jehuti. Because Jehuti has been the only one that could outsmart Ma, Ra or anybody. So Jehuti said, okay, listen. I'm going to get y'all out of this this time. But y'all got to watch yourself. Y'all got to follow my eye. So Jehuti knew, he observed Sekhmet and realized that she had an obsession with blood. And y'all should understand that here in Britain because I hear y'all say it was bloody good. <laughs> y'all must be connected to Sekhmet. Okay. So, <laughs> so anyhow, Sek what Jehuti did was turn, use his magic to turn the Nile River into red wine. Sekhmet thought it was blood. He jumped in and started drinking and got drunk. And then Juhuti transformed the lioness into Basset, the gentle cat. And so to this day, all women got two sides. You got the Sekhmet side that will devour you if you're not in my eye. But then there's the gentle side of Basset, which is beauty and adornment. So the lotus and the papyrus cow. 
Call it what? Sin. Sin. And only the ruler's name goes inside. So we can see. There's some of my eyebrows. Okay, they had a lot of his stuff. They just throw all his stuff. How's today going, Andrew? It's going all right, you know. There's a lot of people in there, so it's pay off. So, um, Are you happy with it? You know what? Might be true. My feet are hurting, man. I just want to put this Talking about all this business. Like, it's a hem. Yeah, I think it's, it's good. How are you feeling after yesterday, then? You know, I'm thankful for all the support that we did that came from. Like, we got an coming out. You know, the pills, everyone that came over, you know, over, you know, big thanks to them, like, and, you know, all the people on the day had so much help, so you know what, if you helped on the day, you know, we had so much comfort. If you helped on the day, we had so much compliment from people about how helpful and polite you were, so you know what, give it up to all my staff, the volunteers that helped on the day, and, um, you know, you really, really done me proud in terms of your, the way you spoke and dealt with people. So that was definitely an off because we've been getting praise on that. Um, in terms of turnout, I personally wasn't very impressed because I was really, um, I was expecting a larger turnout to be fair. People was asked to pay two pounds to come in. I think a lot of people didn't want to pay. Even when we was charging adults on the door, it wasn't really charging, we just asked for a donation of five pounds on the door for adults. Um, we did have some people that wasn't very happy paying it. Um, I don't know how I feel. I'm, I have mixed feelings about that. Um, because especially what you're getting, people, I think people need to remember it's not a funded event. Like, I don't get funding to put the event on. So even one of the speakers came up to me and he was like, oh, the government sponsored you with this. And I was like, no. So there definitely isn't no government sponsoring or whatever. So if you think that it's not, the people that do sponsor the event are black businesses. The only person that worked at black business was um, on State UK, which they were one of the only corporate, whatever, um, organisations that sponsor. This event can work with sponsorship. Um, it doesn't really need, it doesn't need funding, because what you got to remember is, if you get funding, you have to follow someone's agenda. They can just say, oh, you can't call it the Black History Activity Book Launch. Why don't you call it the Cultural History? Or, you know, like, they can change it to, to, to suit them, and it. So it's inclusive. Um, luckily for me, because it's not funded by anyone, I can call it what I want, do it when I want. Because it's practically my event, really. Because it's my book launch, um, my books ain't funded. What's weird, or not weird, is that you both look alike. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> no, you do. I look like that, brother. Yeah? God. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm a little bit up in the air about yesterday. Kinda, I'm, I am happy with, um, the good feedback that I've got. With the bad feedback, it's just, I don't know, I feel like it was people moaning over things um, that really are not in my control. Such as if like, so one of the one of the store holders in particular, they're not getting any sales, um, and they wanted me to go to the stage and announce for them, for, like, they wanted me to make an announcement that they was there and people must go and buy from them. I find it weird because when I walked past them twice, we were sitting down, like when we do events, we don't, we rarely sit down. If we're sitting down, we're tired or something. But if we're sitting down, we can't blame anyone for us not making any money because you've got to interact with people. I've been across the world, like in America, anyway. You can't just expect to sit down and your product sell. You have to, like, literally get eye contact, speak to someone, smile, say hello, just even have a smile. These people are looking down, not smiling. So already, you're kind of, you're warding people up, like, why would people be interested? Because um, there's so much vendors there, you, you need to kind of at least stand up and then give your product some shine. I think to have a, an event at that scale, just for it to break even, you have to have a certain amount of storeholders. And ideally, yes, we would love just to have selected amounts of every storeholders, but that's not realistic. It's, ju it's just not realistic. We do try and cap things. And we do tell people you're the this amount of person in that's doing something. But at the end of the day, we can't we can't just say to you, oh, we're not gonna we, we can't take your booking because we don't have the luxury of doing that. The, the brand isn't that established, so we have to kind of like take most bookings that we get. 
Um, so unfortunately, it is kind of next to the beast. I think that then, therefore, it's, it's up to you then to kind of like try and make your money that you've spent. Apart from that though, that is literally 2% of um, the day. The other 98% that I spoke to um, was fine. Maybe some people I haven't spoke to yet that would say they've had um, a lot of people did well. Um, some people sold out and by four o'clock it was gone. Because I went there, I went to look for someone to get their products and it was gone. Like there was these people that had seen us, it was gone. Um, that was good. I like that. I like that people can come there, make money as well. The kids, good for the kids. You know, a lot of things with the event as well. Remember, I'm not a promoter, I'm just trying to, to do something that I think is needed. So, um, even with the layout, like we did. The lectures over one side and the entertainment on the other. It might not have been the best thing for that size venue. The venue was absolutely huge. I knew it was big anyway, but going there and um, having chairs in there and everything, yo, it was massive. But you know what, all in all, I see things like this. I saw ID Barber in there putting hair. I just thought that looks so, I was, there was a point where I walked past and I thought that looked so sick. I didn't know what it was doing when they got their book out booking. I wasn't 100% sure if they were going to cut hair. But them cutting hair in there really looked good. And it showed the diversity of businesses that wanted to support. So, you know, I thank all of the vendors that came out for coming out and showing off. I hope you all did well. You know, it's my intention that you do well and at least make your money back at a bare minimum. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about it, really. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. We all in. Everybody announced themselves for the vlog right here for Black History Activity Books. Oh, yes, right. indeed. Brother Blue Port Live and Direct. Mm -hmm. red and blue. And at the back. Oh, man, like yeah. he's <laughs> top guy activities, man. You know what it is, man. Richie TV. Black Eyes Stores, yeah, yeah, Black yeah, Eyes yeah, TV. Yeah. Big up. Yeah. Nah, nah, sorry. Nova Felder in the building represent Africa's the future. Oh. Yesterday was an amazing event. You know, the thing that spoke to me. Uh, more than anything else was it was a demonstration of family. I saw a lot of young family out there, mm -hmm. melanated men with women and their children, which means, you know, that there's a, a, a strong contingency of um, melanated love out here. And also the majority of the vendors had children's books, you know what I'm saying? Which shows that the mentality is forward. It's, they're thinking about their future. They're programming these children in ways in which you know, they were in program. You know, we love talking about that back home. I, I don't want to raise my child like me, but they're still sending them to the um, same educational systems. So, and I didn't see no rinky thing publishing. All of them books was on Amazon and they was top notch, which shows that education goes a long way. You know what I'm saying? And um, the people's respect towards how they present their products. Like it was, it was very, it was a, an exemplary professional demonstration of what true um, vending and merchantilism and community is supposed to look like. And if we can unify what's going on in the States, what was, you know, what's going on here, in two or three years, we can have a global conference and connect all four corners, which is the Caribbean, the continent, the Americas, and Europe. I've been enjoying the energy out here. Yeah. I walked into um, the British Museum, first black person I see, they said 19 keys. <laughs> now, you know what I'm talking about? They was from like from Morocco or something. Right. And so just the level of energy that the people are tapped in, I yes. feel like I'm home, like in LA, the, the amount of uh, observation, mm -hmm. right? But what they observing it for, the reason they observing it, the reason I can brag about being noticed is because they observing consciousness and it's tapping in too. Like I'm not right. an entertainer. So I know if a person is listening to me, it's because they're getting teachings and knowledge itself right, so that right, they can right. guide them into God consciousness. Mm, so to have right. that many people of different backgrounds, diasporas, language, ethnicities, nationalities, mm. religions, ideologies, spiritual backgrounds, whatever it may be, tapped into the sole purpose of raising their frequencies to higher vibrations. As long as 
there's a demonstration of love in your heart and you want to see something different for yourself and your children. Mm -hmm. I never thought that I would live to see the day that I was overwhelmed by the love yesterday. Like it was, I don't want to say it was a bit too much, but it was, beautiful. It, was it was overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was an outpouring. It was unprecedented. I didn't expect, you know, that much of what I saw where people were just like, you feel me? And it's like, if I can be overwhelmed by those numbers, then those numbers exist. Cause you know, we've been the parent, you know what I'm saying? I've been amongst a million people, two, three million people. And every other step that I've taken, I've run into people who were showing love back home. So, but it was, this was a close quarter and the energy was, you know, was off the Richter. So I'm like, why that love is not available for one another of the, the people right. out here? Why y'all not overwhelming yourself with that level of love? You know, don't reserve it just for the top guards. You know what I'm saying? Right. When we come through, find a bridge of ideology. You know what I'm saying? Find something in common. Find common ground that y'all can break bread regularly and put all that other stuff. Like when you take your shoes off when you come outside, that's how you should leave your differences at the door. Mm -hmm. And just find something that collectively you can put a smile on your face in one room and you can light that room up. You know what I mean? And I'm willing to do whatever I can in my power to make that link up, you know, strengthen that link up. Not make it possible because it already exists, but strengthen it, and tighten it, and extend that bridge to the continent. You know, one thing that we have to recognize is our strengths, of course, right? Um, we have to recognize that we're in charge of ourselves, the captain of our own ships. And we also have to realize that we have to take one out uh, uh, and deal with our negativities as well. One thing, I've been coming here, I guess, the last two years, and one thing that I notice about my, my black brothers and sisters here in the UK, the ones that are conscious are very industrious because they've taken uh, the immigrant mentality, whether they come from the Caribbean or Africa, and they fused it with, uh, we gotta you know, call it what it is, whether it's the depth of our history and culture and our technology and our mores and our values, so Europeans have adopted and created this, this society, right? And they fused it, they're very industrious. Just like England is a very industrious place. I mean, regardless of what the horrors that they've created in the world, right? They've unleashed on the world. Look at the they're very industrious, yeah. right? They produce for themselves. And you look at the food in Tesco, because they're small. They're a little island, just like in the East with Japan. They had to be out of the, you know, the uh, necessity, right? Out of nature, out of, uh, out of genetic uh, uh, pressure. We had to learn how to deal with not having a life. So, so, right. African people that are here, some of them are descendants from the slave trade. When we go to Liverpool, we will see that. Even in uh, Birmingham was the place where they actually made the shoppers um, for us on those slave ships. So they've put the black people here, have taken that ingenuity and they've applied it. They don't, that's why they have that level of, of, of industrialization, professionalism that we saw that was on display. Everybody had a pop-up. Everybody had an Amazon. Everybody had a website. Everybody had a business card. We're many times when we go to, we see our events. Rinky dink. It's rinky dink, you know? And that shows, you know, like, because sometimes we take for granted we big, we come from the more, a powerful country, and we don't have necessarily, we have a pressure, definitely. But we have to look on both sides. What do we have to contribute to the global family? And we have to look at what the, the, the blacks in the UK have to, 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 to give to the, to the, to the global family. And we have to look at the continent, the Caribbean, and so on and so forth, and put away those differences. Like 19 Keys just mentioned, like we can't get caught up in that divisiveness and that negativity because that hampers our whole mission, which is to move forward. Like Blue said, we have we saw yesterday children's books all over the place, positive black images all over the place, not just coming from Black History Activity books, but come from coming from all of the 170 plus vendors that were there yesterday, and we were all doing black on black business. Right? And it was just a beautiful, beautiful uh, example of what we can do when and, we come together. Yeah, I seen black family, right? In the eyes of the brothers' women, they wasn't choosy. How about that? Yeah. That says a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They wasn't choosy. They was focused on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, don't take this the wrong way. The women were behind the men, right? And I don't, that's not a subservient position. That's a level of protection, protection and belief in, in, in that male figure 
as the provider, the protector, and the king of the castle, you know what I'm saying? That's not dealing with subservience, you know, and maybe that 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 ethos comes by way of them being indoctrinated in this in this particular system that talks about monarchy, royalty, family, things of that nature. So it's like when the brothers is doing what they got to do, the women seem to give the brother the support and the approval that's needed and necessary for mm -hmm. him to lead like in a family dynamic. And I was looking at that. The women wasn't choosy. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have, they wasn't reckless eyeballing the blokes from the... No, very <laughs> From the U.S. American boys. From the U.S., you know. Yeah. And, I, you know, it, it says a lot. So that shows that there's strength, there's potentiality in the family unit really becoming the core dynamic out here to, to, to move mountains. Yes. You feel me? Because every conscious community and every part of this planet, what they're looking for is community at the end of the day. They're looking for community. This is my assessment of the places that I travel, right? People, um, they don't find commonality. That's the same thing. I'm the only one in my family. I'm the only one in my neighborhood, in my city, in my state, and all of that. But, you know, just like I said, you know, look at look 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 at look at her mate. You know what I'm saying? Look what look at Andrew. Look what one person can do. Stop making excuses and stop telling me that one person can't change the world. That's false. You feel me? One person could be demonstrable enough where when the whiz believes, then the community gets behind, and then the city pays attention and acknowledges, and then the whole world will, 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 will bow. You know what I'm saying? These are bows. So that's how that happens. You feel me? The brother brought an idea into fruition and demonstrated enough where he's making a difference. So stop telling me that one person can't make a difference. Now imagine if there was a hundred people moving on that spirit. You know what I'm saying? We wouldn't have these, we wouldn't be talking about um, conversations that deal with lack. It would be abundance. And then when the abundance is flourishing, that's how you attract the people on the outside looking. This is the future and we have to treat it like that. I'm going back to the to states like how when Malcolm came back from international travels. I'm willing to kill for this, to live for this. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, to me, it's the only future that exists. Yes. Peace. These are different, various forms of family, but like Sister said, do we understand what family is? I remember this one. Even if you're gonna go to the Abrahamic traditions, even if you're dealing with the New Testament, at one point Abraham had many wives, but Sarah didn't have many husbands. The king is only great because he serves the people. And so you are what this is all about. The Wait, what's it?